Hi everyone, it's James here with the first of a new series of microphone reviews. Over the coming weeks, what I'll be doing is looking at some of the more regular faces, if you like, of studio microphones, showing what they're good at, what they do best, but also taking a look at some new kit and stuff that's maybe been around a little while but maybe is not necessarily on your radar. Uh, and this week is the first of those. What I'll be looking at today is the Shaw PG42, the PG27, and the X2U. Now, these are all USB microphones or USB interfaces in the case of the X2U. But, because they're from Shaw, they actually do have a really, really good mic capsule, or in case of the X2U, a mic pre. So I'm talking to you right now directly on the PG42. Now, of the range, this is the more expensive, but it's designed primarily as a kind of um, sort of lead vocal podcaster or professional broadcast microphone. If we take a look at Shaw's website, here's the PG42 USB. And if I scroll down to specs, we can see that on the frequency curve, there's a kind of presence peak between about 8 and 12K, specifically designed to bring out the most of spoken word and the human voice. The PG27, however, is much more of a studio all-rounder, uh, much better at dealing with higher sound pressure levels. And as you can see, it does have a presence lift between 8 and 12K, but nothing quite as pronounced as the 42. Taking a look at the hardware itself, both mics follow Shaw's new style of kind of elliptical arrangement. On the front we have an LED showing when USB is connected. We also have the main volume control for the headphone jack which is tucked in neatly behind. Next to the headphone mini jack is a pad switch to switch between 0 dB and minus 20 dB cut. And on the very back we have a monitor rotary control. Now this basically acts as our blend between our direct signal and our playback signal from our software. Going all the way around to the other side, we have our mic gain and a tricolor LED to indicate signal, peak and overload. They're quite heavy units, they feel really nicely put together, they're well built and because it's sure, you know you're going to get a really nice sounding capsule. Both mics are a 1 inch diaphragm condenser, side addressed. Both are fixed polar response, so they're both a cardioid mic. You can see here my setup, it's on a straight, a normal mic stand with a voice guard by Prime Acoustic, which Shaw UK have lent me, and many thanks to Graham from Shaw UK for lending us the mics and the voice guard. So enough talk and enough tech, let's actually hear how these things sound in action. So first of all, I'm going to use the PG42 with some acoustic guitar just to lay down a kind of a rhythm bed. So there's our acoustic guitar part and now I'm going to add some percussion. So I'm going to put some real real time tambourine on top of that. So let's hear how that goes together. The volume of the tambourine is really quite high so let's just bring the gain down. So it appears by initial setup I can't get the gain on the mic low enough to not have the tambourine peak so what I'm going to have to do is just duck back a little bit further. So let's record some tambourine alongside our acoustic guitar. So what I just had to do there was bring up the gain so I can actually now record some vocal. It'll only be oohs and ahs because trust me you don't want to hear any more than that. But it should give you some idea of how the PG42 sounds on vocals. After all it is designed to be a vocal mic. Yeah. 
So let's just do a quick mix on those three tracks just to add some reverb and a little bit of EQ just so it doesn't sound quite so naked. One of the things I love about this is it's all happening on one microphone. No messing about with cables or sorting anything out or plugging things in. Just a microphone and a gain control and we've already put started to put down some of our track. What I'm going to do now is swap over to using the PG27. Now everything you've heard up to now, including my voice speaking to you right now as the kind of narration, is recorded on the PG42. One of the nice things about using ScreenFlow, which is our screen capture software we use to create all these tutorial videos, is we can record both the Pro Tools signal, our process signal, and the input device, which in this case is obviously the USB mic. But what I'm going to do now is swap over to using the 27 so I can whack it in front of a real Marshall guitar cabinet and see how it responds to higher sound pressure levels. Okay, so you're now hearing me through the Shure PG27, the little brother of the 47, which is much more designed as an instrument microphone. And I think you can hear instantly that the top end is not quite so pronounced, it's not quite so sibilant, it's not quite so sweet for vocals and definitely not so sweet as a voiceover microphone. It still sounds really good, um, but it hasn't got that real top end, that real that you might like from a voiceover mic. And that's definitely how Shaw have engineered it. They have categorically said that this is an instrument mic, whereas the 47 is very much a vocal and voiceover mic. So what I'm going to do now is put this in front of my Marshall cab, record some guitar along to the track which we've just been building. <laughs> Okay, so that was the electric recorded on the PG27, and we have the acoustic and the tambourine recorded on the PG47. So let's just set this mix up so you can get a vague idea of what's going on. So what do I like so far about these? Well, they're well built, they sound really good, they've got a really nice presence, a really nice top end, especially the 47, which sounds fantastic for vocals. What do I not like? Uh, okay, so the main thing I don't like is, and this is true of all USB mics in general, if you want to record something that is not in the same place as you, like a guitar amp, and as we found just there, sticking a guitar up on the floor and having your USB microphone trailing to it means all your cables have to trail to it like headphones and your USB lead. Normally it's only one cable we have to deal with so that generally means unless you've got a hundred foot headphone lead you're going to need to be in the same room so they don't necessarily lend themselves to studio recording quite so well. But sure, do have a really good little gadget in their arsenal of toys that being this thing, the X2U USB signal adapter. So I'm now talking to you via the X2U and sure rather nicely and rather neatly and very cost effectively do a package that includes the X2U and our old favourite, the industry standard SM57. So I'm now talking to you into an SM57 via the X2U and I'm monitoring again through the headphone output. Now the benefit of this of course is that all your cables and everything run back to your X2U which could be on your desk or on your leg next to you when you're if you're running with a laptop. But the other benefit of course is you can use any mic you like. Now the A to D converters and the preamp section of all three devices we've talked about, the PG27, the PG42 and the X2U are exactly the same. And I think they sound really, really good, very natural, very flat sounding. But the lovely thing would be, if with a package like the 57 and the X2U, you're getting your everyman mic so you can record brass, drums, percussion without the problem of the really high input level and not being able to gain down enough. But you can also connect any of your favourite or even more expensive microphones. If you turn up at a studio where they happen to have an AKG C12, of course, yeah, use that. It's going to sound fantastic. But I really like this as a solution. It's very neat. It's a really nice headphone preamp on the go rather than using your Mac inbuilt headphone pre, which I'm sure is fine, but this to me sounds better and much more natural. A couple of things I've noticed when using 
all three of these devices is that you have to use Pro Tools in aggregate devices mode because the input and the output of the three Shure units we've talked about act as a different device. So one device is the input, one device is the output. So if you're trying to use them standalone, it won't work. So you have to use them, certainly in Pro Tools, with the aggregate device hardware driver. But it's not a big deal because obviously latency isn't really an issue because you can monitor at source using the monitor control. The X2U also provides phantom power. So if you've got a phantom powered microphone or something that doesn't have its own power supply, then you can use that as well. I'm just going to record one more track. I'm going to record a, a clap part, if you like, just me clapping. So to add another element to this track, so you can hear how the SM57 sounds on top. One thing you don't get with the X2U is a pad control, because this is generally inbuilt to most microphones anyway. So I'm going to have to bring the input gain down to stop my clapping overloading. So now I'm just going to blend that in to the rest of my track. Hope you've enjoyed that and there'll be more mic reviews coming in future weeks. We've got lots of stuff lined up. If there's anything particular that you'd like me to put through its paces or anything you've seen online, if we can get hold of it, I'm sure we'll try and review it for you. Um, hope to see you again soon on another mic review.